this is the moment, this is my, my time, this is my era, and this is the passing, the passing of the torch. So I can't wait. My hands are itchy. I'm um, three weeks out, so I just can't wait to get in there. Thanks so much, Tim. And with that, we turn to Tim's opponent, Keith Thurman. He is 30 and 1. 22 knockouts. He's one of the best welterweights of his generation. He owns victories over Sean Porter, Mario Barrios, Robert Guerrero, among many others, fighting out of and representing at Clearwater, Florida. Keith Thurman, Keith, the floor is yours for any opening statements. Oh, yes. This is a, a beautiful night of boxing. You just gave everyone the download on what to expect uh, with the undercard. This is really stacked. Um, I believe this, this is going to be the kickoff of a very unprecedented uh, thing in boxing, where there's just so many world titles on the line, so many great fighters just getting in the ring together. So March 30th is just going to be tremendous. I've really been trying to uh, explain that this goes back to the old days where it was a fought triple hitter, um, you know, uh, with, with just so much great fight, so much great action. Zoo just making his statement that he wants to take over uh, and let this be his era. He's undefeated. He represented how he had uh, steamrolled through the division in 2023. Uh, me, myself, I've done great things in boxing, uh, at welterweight, and now I'm just trying to climb up this ladder and make a big splash going against this Aussie shark in the deep waters here uh, come March 30th. And uh, it's just going to be a great fight. Tim Zhu has an amazing style, uh, action pack. Um, he moves forward. He's looking to do damage. And I've always boxed very, uh, very well and just very methodical. And I just had great performances throughout my career. And, you know, a lot of people think that I shouldn't have signed this contract, that this shouldn't be. If I wanted to come up to 54, I should be fighting anybody but Tim Zhu to kick it off. But this is what I live for. I live for the action. I want to shake the world up. I'm coming in as an underdog. I'm coming off of a layoff. I feel like Ray Leonard. I feel like Muhammad Ali. Uh, this story has been done before. It's my job to make the upset come the 30th and turn this into my story and to represent my greatness and what Keith One Time Thurman brings to the sport of boxing. Thanks so very much, Keith. Uh, those of you in the media who are on the call, you will get an opportunity real soon to talk to both guys yourself. Uh, I just wanted to take the opportunity to ask them both a couple questions myself. And Keith, we've got you here, so let's start with you. You touched on this already to some extent, but this is your first fight since 2022, only your second one since 2019. Why this fight? Why Tim Zhu? Why now? You know, the moment you ask why, I get to ask, why not, you know? So, I mean, it's life, you know? You want life to have a certain excitement to it. To say that we're not junkies, we're fighters, baby, you know? You, 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 want, you want my blood to be stagnant or you want it to boil with passion, you know? And that's what Tim Zoo does. When I got the phone call, it just woke the blood in me, the warrior, the, the, the one that has something to gain, we, we don't do this to gain nothing. We do this to gain something. Love, admiration, money, fame, um, legacy. There, there's so much to gain. And uh, that's what this fight is all about. If there was nothing to gain, if Keith Thurman just goes in the ring and just puts on a show and gets back into action, and it's okay. We could, you know, we, we could uh, just slowly kickstart the engine, but I don't I don't want to do that, baby, you know? I want to launch off in the outer space. I want fireworks. I just I just love boxing. I love shaking up the world of boxing. And apparently, just from the talks of the whole dilemma of me fighting Zoo, I'm doing exactly what I want to do. Is I got to walk away with the victory for it to come into completion. But besides that, I mean, I'm very happy and I'm very satisfied with this fight right now. Yeah, I wanted to pick up on something you just said. Is it fair to sort of infer from that that you're getting, even after all your experience, kind of a charge of out of maybe being considered the underdog here against this young guy? You know, who's who's doing this, right? The bookies, they they work with analytics, right? They know Keith Thurman. Tim Zoo's coming over here from a performance. Uh, to 
do a big fight in Vegas, which he hasn't done before, but he's been fighting good fights, and he's been consistent, and he's been active. So they see the active zoo in the prime of his career with Keith Thurman with so much inactivity since 2019 after the Manny Pacquiao fight. But they know my story. They know, well, Keith Thurman had bone spurs against uh, Danny Garcia. He had hand surgery after Manny Pacquiao. He had the one fight against Mario Barrio. He has another layoff. And that's that's the analytics. I mean, I'm a little tired of hearing about it, but it's my life and I got to live it. And I can't do nothing un until we get past the 30th and I perform. And I show the world what I have to give, you know. Um, at the end of the day, that's what's making me the underdog, the analytics behind this story. But when I reference Sugar Ray Leonard, you know, he was coming off a big layoff against Hearn, you know, Ali was coming off a big layoff, you know, they, they've dealt athletes in the past. It, as a spectator, you can only do with information that you're given, which creates this narrative that we're discussing right now. But as an athlete, it's my job to step into the ring and to prove my own greatness. As my shirt says, you know, be good, be great, be a champion, okay? So that's what camp is all about. It's a progressional state, and I've been working really hard in preparation for a very tough fight in my career. But me and my team, just like any world-class fighter, we have faith, and uh, we believe that we have the skills to make the upset uh, come March 30th. Keith, thanks so much. You'll have the opportunity to talk some more to the media who are on the call right now. But uh, I wanted to switch right now to Tim. Tim, there's been a lot of reference to your 2023. It was a tremendous year for you. Uh, three fights, three wins, two knockouts. It could have been very different. You could have just sat on your ranking and waited for Jamel Charlo for a fight that, as it turned out, would just would not have happened. How difficult a decision was it for you to say, no, I'm not going to wait around for this guy. I'm going to bet on myself, and I'm going to go out there and keep fighting. No, there was there was it wasn't a hard decision at all. It was it was it was made um, it was made for the fact that I knew that where I wanted to get to to this stage where I'm at now, I had to take these fights and I had to keep progressing with my career, or else what was I going to do? Sit on my ass and do nothing? That's not me. So uh, I made it quite simple: uh, to take fights, take the hardest fights, take with whoever was out there. Uh, uh, Mendoza was coming off a spectacular victory uh, over Fandora, so it was the, the other man in the division, so I had to eliminate. I was just there to, to prove to, to everyone in the division that I am I am the man, you know, and uh, Charla was on was on a honeymoon, and then he went and fought uh, Canelo, and now he's off again riding in the sunset, so for me it was all about proving that I'm the, I'm the man at 154. Too often, one of the complaints I think about the, the fans sometimes have about boxing is that fighters don't fight enough anymore. Is that important for you to keep going? Like, we don't often see guys come out at your level, come out and fight three times against tough opposition. Is that something that you want to maintain? Yeah, it's, it's, it's addictive. You know, when you're not content with anything, it's addictive. And you, uh, you see your bank purse growing, you see your, your talent growing. You see everything growing, you just want more and more, and, and uh, you keep striving for, for the greater, and you know, and it just keeps growing for me. What did you think when the name Keith Thurman was brought to you as your next opponent? Christmas. Christmas came early. Simple. <laughs> like, I couldn't be happier. How do, you see, how do you see things unfolding on March 30th? Well, the way I'm feeling now, honestly, I feel... Like a train wreck. I'm about to steamroll everyone. Simple. It's not just Keith. No, there's, it's not just Keith. You know, no disrespect to Keith, but it's everyone. Simple. You mentioned how important it is to you, how much you've been looking forward to be on this stage, and not just fighting in the States. The Las Vegas, baby. Um, your father obviously had some big uh, headline fights here, including not far from the T-Mobile at the Mandalay Bay. As a kid, did you ever, like, look at some of those fights and think, yeah, that's that's what I want. I want that glitz and glamour of Las Vegas. Look, I think if you if you as a fighter don't dream about the big stage, then you're not you're, you're not in the right sport. You know, it's it's quite simple. You grow up seeing the big fights 
the Sugar Land Grey Leonard, you know, you see all these big fights. It all happened here. This is the city of dreams. You make it here in Vegas, you make it worldwide. So it's quite simple. Um, my my goals and dreams and aspirations are on top of the on top of the ceiling, you know, and I'm and I'm chasing them. Terrific, Tim. Thank you very much. Uh, I know we have quite a lot of media waiting who want to ask you both questions of their own. So I'm going to hand it over to Andrew Rogers, you know, who uh, opened the floor to all the waiting media. Thanks very much, Karen. Appreciate that. Uh, for all the media, thank you for joining us today. If you have questions, uh, please go ahead and hit the raise hand icon on there down at the bottom of the screen. Um, before we get started, if we could please also limit it to one question per fighter per media member that will allow us to get to more people. Uh, we'll start off with Jim Conlon for RCD Radio Sport in Ireland. Jim, go ahead and unmute yourself and you can ask your question. Hello, guys. Uh, my first uh, question is for uh, Keith Thurman. I suppose, Keith, people talk about the risk factor in terms of boxing, in terms of taking on the big fights. Is, is this really a no-risk fight uh, for Keith Thurman? Is it everything to gain in this fight for you? Well, Jim, you know, there's risk with almost every fight that we take. But, of course, there are some fights when you're of a certain caliber, you know, you don't you don't tend to feel the uh, the risk because you're overly confident. Like Tim is saying, he's gonna go through the whole division. He's feeling so strong and confident in himself right now. He's not he's not necessarily overlooking anybody. He just feels so strong, you know. For me, I've I've done things in the welterweight division, and I got this phone call. I was told, consider it, Keith. You don't have to take this fight. We have a fight lined up for you at 147. But, you know, with risk comes reward. And with everyone talking, with the backstory and this and that, I just feel like a victory over Tim Zhu, with all the work that he's been putting in to build his name, the three fights he had last year, he'd be stepping in the ring today with, as, a, as an inactive fighter like myself at 21-0. But instead, he's 24 now with 17 knockouts. So he's built himself up. He's got confidence. The world is starting to recognize him. And we're putting him through the Keith Thurman test. But because of my activity, they see Zoo and said, I don't know if this is what you're supposed to do, Keith. This might be Keith Thurman's test. And I just love that dilemma. I love that paradox right there, you know. Um, I'm testing him, he's tested me, and at the end of the day, the best man will win. But with him, he's going to continue to do what he wants to do at 154. With me, I would have shooken up the world. I would surprise a lot of the doubters, a lot of the haters, and I could reestablish my legacy in the sport of boxing. So yes, there's risk, but there's a lot to gain, and it's worth it all, baby. Like you said, having, having dreams, being a dreamer, wanting to be on the big stage, it's, it's worth it all, at all costs. Okay. And my final question is for Tim. Tim, you have been steamrolling. You've been on an mission to, to get to the top of boxing. But there comes a time in every fighter's career that he needs these sort of legacy fights, these sort of defining fight, fights in terms of proving his legacy in terms of boxing. Is this a possibility that this key term gives you the possibility of having one of those sort of legacy sort of fights? Is that what makes it so glamorous for you? Yeah, how, how isn't it? Like, by defeating a former unified world champion, isn't that legacy right there? To be doing it on a, a first ever Amazon Prime card on a on the stage uh, where the new the new coliseum of boxing is right now isn't that legacy like um i don't know what else is you know of course it's a legacy fight all right great thank you for those questions jim uh next up cam buford with voice of the fans cam please unmute yourself and you can ask your question hey keith i got a question for you um you talked about being having a layoff how do you combat that layoff? What's the best way that you attack that? I mean, it's the work that you put in, you know. But, I mean, you guys just keep saying the word layoff. You guys don't understand how 
I last year I was in the gym. I was with a strength coach. I already got down to 165. I was already in preparation for so much action that didn't manifest on the table. So even though it is a layoff, what, what this real layoff represents is time under the bright light. You guys haven't seen me under the bright light. But ultimately, man, you know, you just got to put in that work with the strength, the conditioning, and, and getting in the proper sparring. And making sure that the reflexes are good, your reaction time is good, that your punch count is good. Um, otherwise, it, it will be evident in the fight that, look, this fighter, no matter how confident he was, you know, he, he, he was lacking something. So it's my job to do the reverse of that and put in all the hard work and effort in this camp. We got days to go. He's itching the fight, and, you know, we got a little bit more time to build up. We got a few more pounds to keep dropping, and it just is what it is, man. It's, it's, it's boxing. Like I've always said, it's nothing new, just another black eye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, Tim, I got a question for you, sir. Uh, come, coming over into Vegas, can you simulate that uh, that feel, that arena, that, that the anticipation that you're going to feel – fight in Vegas, as you say, the story place. Can you simulate that, or do you even need to simulate that? It's just another fight for you. No, nah, it's, look, I feel like when you get in the ring, it doesn't matter where, where you are. Boxing is so universal. When you step in that ring, it doesn't matter where you are in the world. You know, it's the same thing. It's just you and your opponent. So it doesn't matter if there's 20,000 people that don't like you or there's 20,000 people that like love you. Um, it's just you and your opponent in, in that very, very uh, ring, so it doesn't matter. All right, perfect. Thank you for those questions. Cam, uh, as a reminder to me, if you have questions for the fighters, please hit that raise hand icon. Uh, next up, Andrew Jones with uh, Believe Network. Andrew, please unmute yourself. You can ask your question. Thank you, Andrew. Appreciate that. First question for Tim. Tim? Well, actually, you said that you want to make the T-Mobile arena become the Sue mobile arena in this fight. Yeah. And um, have you been able to see Lennon B and those that have doubted you out there at Mayweather Camp in Vegas about being an eighth and one on the dog here and how you want to make sure that you let them know that you overcome their doubt? Oh, look, man, there's always going to be doubt in everyone's mind, you know, so I really don't pay attention to it. To any of that stuff anyway um you want people you know you don't want one side to just be like he's gonna just steamroll him he's gonna steamroll him you want people to pick a side or oh, i think he's gonna win or oh, i think he's gonna win that will make the fight more interesting or what is he gonna do when he comes to you like that or what is he gonna do when he comes to you like that that's all part of boxing and all the questions will be answered on fight night it's simple and for keith just wanted to ask you when you had the ig live with um sean porter and with Tim, did you feel that Tim wasn't respecting your full entire resume enough, or were you just entertained by the fun banner? Nah, man, we uh, we had fun. I saw I broke his shell a little bit. I made that man smile. He knows it, you know. Um, I'm 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 different, man. You know, we we both really live this life. You know, there's there's nothing to fear. Um, we we both just. We're both dreamers, man. He said he's knocking me out in two rounds, you know. I'm, it's only going to take six minutes to prove him wrong, you know. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're, both, we're both dreamers, man. We love boxing. We, we love the challenge. And, you know, it is what it is, man. Just like, just like a good old uh, scrapple in the, in, the, in the yard when you're growing up, no matter who wins, no matter who loses, there's just something about this sport. At the end of the day, both men, whether they say it or not, they're going to have a different perspective for one another. They're going to have a different form of respect for one another. And, it, you know, it, none, none of that really matters. That's all post-fight drama. This is pre-fight drama. And, you know, Tim, I, I, I see the shiner. I got one, too, baby. You're not <laughs> untouchable. You're not untouchable. I'm not untouchable. This is going to be a great fight. And that's what the, that's what the fans want, man. You know, they don't want to see um, – they, they complain about Floyd and – they complain about certain people who they. Some people like the sweet science. Some people don't like when people are are too pretty in there. They're trying to be too. Pretty.
perfect, you know, and you got two imperfect, perfect fighters stepping in the ring there. Tim has his style. He's been dominating. I have my style that's been very eclectic, hard for a lot of people to get around. I had my one loss to Pacquiao. I was the original champion that said, I got to owe. I'm not afraid to let it go. If you can beat me, beat me. One time's been beaten one time. Who's going to beat me the second time? And that's why I'm here to find out. Uh, perfect. Thank you for those questions, Andrew. Uh, next up, we have Big Fight Weekend. Please unmute yourself and you can ask your question. Uh, hi, uh, I have the same question for both fighters. Uh, how has this training camp been different to uh, other camps you've had in the past? Tim, if you want to take that first, please. No, same, same old for me. Same motions, same, same old. It's quite simple. Boxing is universal again. Um, you do the same things over and over again. I guess you get different sparring partners to mimic some certain things and you work on different game plans. But boxing, yeah, it's the same thing, man. It's just punching on. Thank you. Yeah, you know, I'm moving up in weight, so, you know, it's a little different. I don't have a, a dramatic weight pool. I'm actually, my, my body, you know, mentally I was prepared to compete at 147 until this phone call just hit. And, uh, you know, my body is probably a, almost about a week ahead of the curve. I think I ended up uh, pulling a little too much off this week. So I'm going to have to give myself a refeed next week in preparation uh, to continue training hard but not making myself too light. So that's just something new. Like Tim said, like most of the time, it's, there's nothing really new. Um, he's been competing here. I haven't, so there is a new variable for me. You know, you change up your sparring partners. Um, I got some I got some guys that I think are a little bigger than me, uh, even though they they might be welterweight. They're like walking around at 172 right now, 168. Uh, and then I got a real middleweight sparring partner who's got heavy hands that, you know, is going to mentally prepare me. You know, he's got a stiff jab, and I'm going to have to respect that. And, you know, uh, Tim, Tim has a very unique style. He got that club and right hand. Pacquiao dropped me with his right hand. So we know... Uh, that I just got to be wary. I got to tighten up on that side. Um, he's going to be coming, knocking at the door all day, all night. Boom, 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 boom. Trying to uh, have the highlight of the night at the T-Mobile Arena. And, uh, you know, just besides making little adjustments on the offense, defense, and mental preparation. And right now, the way the, that the weight's coming off my body and my meal prep, that's going to have to increase next week. Uh, for the most part, you know, I still just want to move. Uh, I want to be able to move right, be fluid, um, have a good punch out, um, have a good game plan, be able to mix up uh, speed, power. And I've always been a boxer puncher. And we just want to be able to do that. We want to be able to represent Keith Thurman like we've done in the past and reestablish that here and now come March 30th. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, our... Last questions for media are going to come from Jason Fletcher with T Street Media, Fight View 360. Jason, if you could please unmute yourself, you can ask your question. Jason, you there? All right. Well, with that, I guess we'll wrap early. Uh, thank you very much to both Keith and Tim. Uh, and thank you to all the media that joined us today. With that, I'll turn it back over to Kieran to close things out for us. Thanks very much, Andrew. Thanks to everybody for their questions. And of course, thanks to Keith and Tim for joining us. Before we leave, I'm going to give the fighters an opportunity to make any closing statements they'd like to make. Uh, Tim, let's go to you first of all. Um, what can I say? I've already said it all. Uh, three weeks out, let's, let's just get it on. Keith, how about yourself? Exactly. Um, I just want to thank everybody for their questions. Uh, thank everybody for help promoting this fight. This is definitely a fight that you're going to want to tune into. Um, you know, uh, you know, 
thank you, Ethan Zhu, for coming out here and you know making his camp in in America, doing the most to prepare for this fight, be a part of the limelight. Um, this is what it takes to be superstars in the sport of boxing. We're we're all living the dream. We're the action. You guys are the spectators, but we're nothing without the fans. We're nothing without the media. Thank you so much. God bless everybody. Stay tuned um, and enjoy a few more pressers that will hit on fight week. And then ultimately, don't miss the fight March 30th, Amazon Prime pay-per-view. Let's go. Keith Thurman doing my job for me because I was just going to wrap this up and just remind <laughs> folks that, yes, Keith Thurman <laughs> against Tim Zhu is the main event of a four-fight card on a PBC on Prime pay-per-view. From the T-Mobile Arena, the main event is promoted by TGB Promotions in association with No Limit Boxing. As a reminder, tickets are available now to AXS.com, and the pay-per-view itself starts at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific to our media and to our fighters. Thank you very much for joining us. Wherever you are, have a great evening, have a great afternoon, have a great day, and enjoy your weekend. Thanks very much. Let's go.